a COVID and talking about um, <laughs> next steps. We've got uh, we've, it's just been announced a few hours early, a few hours ago. Uh, Boris Johnson announced that we're going to be in our third national lockdown here in the UK to address um, the COVID nineteen spike that we've had in the last what four months? No, I mean a month and a half or something, right? Um, obviously, you guys are aware there's this new variant that's sort of like sweeping the nation. Um, it somehow managed to start in the southeast of England, and now it's kind of slowly but surely creeping its way up across um, the whole of the UK. So they're you know they're kind of saying telling us that most likely we're going to have a big issue in the Midlands um, sometime towards the end of February. So they're sort of trying to mitigate that and trying to, you know, um, stop that before it happens and to some degree by enacting a national lockdown, which is interesting because something tells me if it was the other way around, if this mutation started in the north, they wouldn't have they probably would have still had us in tier two, tier three in London. So it's funny that the moment the mutation starts taking a hold of the lot of London in the southeast of England, where most of the power base or the preferred um, citizens live for the government, they quickly make a change. But if it happened up north, it probably wouldn't have happened. But regardless, um, this is uh, Boris Johnson essentially laying out what's happening and what we're basically in. Uh, what we basically have to look forward to in the next couple of weeks or so. So let's have a listen to what he has to say. Do, 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 do. Come on, come on, brother. With most of the country already under extreme measures, it's clear that we need to do more together to bring this new variant under control while our vaccines are rolled out. In England, we must therefore go into a national lockdown which is tough enough to contain this variant. That means the government is once again instructing you to stay at home. Yippee! You may only leave home for limited reasons permitted in law, such as to shop for essentials, to work if you absolutely cannot work from home, to exercise, to seek medical assistance, such as getting a Covid test, or to escape domestic abuse. The full details of what you can and can't do will be available at gov.uk forward slash coronavirus. If you are clinically extremely vulnerable, we're advising you to begin shielding again, and you will shortly receive a letter about what this means for you. And because we now have to do everything we possibly can to stop the spread of the disease, primary schools, secondary schools and colleges across England must move to remote provision from tomorrow, except for vulnerable children and the children of key workers. Everyone will still be able to access earlier settings such as nurseries. We recognise that this will mean it's not possible or fair for all exams to go ahead this summer as normal. The Education Secretary will work with Ofqual to put in place alternative arrangements. We will provide extra support to ensure that pupils entitled to free school meals will continue to receive them while schools are closed and we will distribute more devices to support remote education. It's funny about the whole um, school meals thing. Do you remember when that was an issue in the beginning of the lockdown, right? Seems when he was like really, really against uh, um, allowing kids to eat. <laughs> well, I don't know what to say, but well, look, we are where we are, right? Um, we know the government's been dealing with it pretty poorly. The issues for me with this whole thing is, you know, I'm not really sold on lockdowns. I don't really know how effective they actually are in terms of stopping a virus or stemming the flow of the sp stemming the spread of a virus, especially at this stage. I think lockdowns are probably more most beneficial at the beginning of a pandemic, right? When you're sort of trying to get a grip of everything and doing the actual, you know, kind of um, when you're trying your best to um what is that word called limit the amount of admissions into hospital right so they don't overflow them that's probably when it works the best and then the, in the background you obviously are developing practices and in, in hospitals and stuff and procedures that are going to allow people to recover better when they do get um if they do inevitably do get infected with this virus but 
in the long term, you just can't do lockdowns forever, right? Because of, you know, especially in a Western country and um, with a somewhat democracy, right? With this idea that you, you know, have the right to go and move and move around as you please and earn a living and all this sort of malarkey. It's just difficult to convince your populace to um, stay at home, listen to what you say, forego their sort of like liberties and whatever it may be. Um, for to help stem the flow of a virus that they feel like the government haven't got any control over because that's another part of the issue too right it's all well and good asking people to stay at home but when you keep asking them to stay at home and there's no change and people don't feel as if anything has really moved or changed moved and not, nothing's really happened differently since what the summer it feels like all right or since the end of the summer if anything things have just gone worse and worse right cases keep going up hospitality well cases keep going up hospitalization keeps going up in some places right some hospitals are reporting they've got not got enough beds some places are saying they're completely empty like it's just so many you know conflicting stories and opinions that exist out there but ultimately what we have is um we don't really have an end goal in mind there's no real end date there's no real idea on what sort of numbers we're sort of aiming for our number cases deaths whatever there's nothing we're sort of aiming for at the moment it's a bit macabre i just say deaths and just move on in it that's just the, the mind of covid we're in at the moment we've not even you know we've not even put a face a name a family a picture to the people that we've missed and we sorry the people that have passed away unfortunately during covid and that's one of the sad realities that we're sort of having to grapple with right everyone kind of want to get back to normal but essentially we are saying when you're saying you want to get back to normal is that you don't care about people that are sick out there you just want to get your life back to normal um it's just really distressing to kind of figure out and wrangle on your head but i guess it is what it is but regardless we don't have any end date in goal we don't have an end goal we don't have a target number of cases or deaths or whatever it may be um and we're just sort of like hoping that this sort of works out. And I think I said it from ages ago to a few people that I always got the impression that they were really banking on the development of a vaccine to basically get us out of this shit. I don't think they ever had any plan in place to have us to like, um, what was that thing they're doing in Australia and New Zealand? Um, uh, something, I think it's like a term, it's something like zero cases or zero something, right? There was never a plan in place to copy or to emulate or to maybe try our best to get to a level where we could brag about the level the, the where we could get to a level where we could brag about how low our case numbers were and how low our death numbers were i don't think we ever had that in mind because we've never really spoken about that right i think we heard a lot of people talking about you know matt hancock talking about the amount of people that are doing track and trace the amount of people that are getting tested but there was never any sort of like pride and kind of um goal in mind to us to get down to a certain amount of cases so that we could prevent um the untimely passing of people due to covid it never really felt that way so i always got the impression that they were just hoping and praying that of course with our you know with the level of medical professionals that we have here in the uk it was bound to happen that we were going to be one of the first countries in the eu or in the world to develop a vaccine that we could kind of roll out pretty quickly and we did right we've done it with two so far especially the the most recent vaccines i think it costs like three pound a pop or something right or per dose so it's pretty um, cheap to develop and of course it doesn't require you to use a special fridge so all well and good but I thought that that was always a plan it kind of felt like that and I think I think I would have been okay or the world or maybe the country would have been okay if they would just been honest and just said that it kind of renders all the lockdowns prior a bit useless right if we were just waiting for a vaccine anyway we probably would have been better off telling the population hey we're gonna um have some restrictions in place some things will just not be open because we don't want people to hang around i don't know whether it's bars or restaurants doesn't really matter uh pick your poison but we're going to allow you to kind of go about your everyday lives right but with some restrictions in terms of where you can go what time you can go bloody blah 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 how many groups of people social distance and stuff but just carry on as normal because we've got we're developing a vaccine and we're kind of heading towards the finishing line with that that would have made much more sense and maybe even it towards christmas if you thought hey because it's a flu season in the winter we want to kind of stem the amount of people that are outside hanging around you maybe just kind of enact like a short circuit breaker right before the new before the end of the year something right just something innovative because i just have a feeling again maybe it's just me that i just don't think lockdowns work for countries like ours or maybe I don't know, maybe it's not just countries like us being arrogant, but just in general, at this stage of the game, it's just too late. It really is. It doesn't do anything. Um, so let's. So if anything, this lockdown is essentially what they would have hoped it would have been 
the one before Christmas, right? Or the one in the new year, the one just before um, winter time. That would have been the kind of lockdown they were hoping to do then because they would have had a vaccine then, we were able to lock people down, which essentially means it allows them to maybe ramp up the amount of vaccination they can do week in, week out, which is still a n- mad number. Supposedly from stuff I've read online, that we have to get two million people vaccinated per week to hit any sort of target to get you know of kind of clearing um the most vulnerable and making sure they're okay and that still requires 90 percent of the population to be compliant so it's like oof like and then you have to set up of course the procedures and the places where they can get that done um there's obviously people in the night in the hospitality industry that are willing to lend their services but there's been a bit of a conflict of interest when it comes to health and safety and all this sort of stuff it's just it's an absolute shit show but hey you know who knows this might work this might legitimately work and not through any fault and not through any kind of um consequence of what the government's doing just because the vaccine's around this might just work because of that because i've got a feeling people might just be fed up and be like you know what i'm just gonna go out and get vaccinated regardless of what the government says i, ha- I should and shouldn't do and when i should go and get it done they're just gonna go get it done for you know for, for the sake of it just so they can they can kind of get back to some level of normality and then of course with everything shut especially in the uk it's going to limit the amount of people, you know, coming into contact with each other, which would you would hope on paper would limit the amount of spread of COVID. And then guess what? We're back to normal. That's the plan anyway. That's the hope. That's the plan. That's the hope in place at the moment. But again, let me know your opinions down below. What do you think? Do you think um this lockdown 3.0 is going to work? Or is this just another pointless exercise um, from a government that seems to be um, hell bent on proving how inept and clueless they are dealing with this pandemic in any kind of sensible way let me know your feelings and thoughts down below